The Salesforce reports are at the heart of all the reporting within Abacus. So let's just look at one of them as an example. This is a very simple trial balance report which shows the ledger entries and some of the ledger entry information. But actually, it's only a part of the story. If we look at this particular ledger entry, you can see how much information is contained on it. First of all, it has the company. And bear in mind, if you have multi companies, you would need to filter so that you just display the entries from one company. The financial year, ledger entry number, the date, transaction reference, the type, the description, the analysis codes, the currency, the account, the account industry, the account region, the account type, the account owner. And then obviously we've got what nominal code it's been posted to, the debits, the credits, and a movement, the customer reference, the invoice reference, what bank account was used if it's a cash transaction, the product, the product family, the product quantity, the standard cost, the unit profit, and because there was only one, the total profit on that transaction. So as you can see, you get a lot of very rich information, which makes building reports in Abacus extremely easy and very flexible. Furthermore, you can add other objects in Salesforce to the ledger item. So for example, you can bring in information from the account object or from the product object. These can be custom fields that you've created for your business. If you want to find out more about building reports in Abacus, we would strongly recommend the relevant Salesforce Trailblazer module on report building. This will teach you all you need to know. We deliver quite a lot of reports, so to make them easier to manage, we have them organised into folders, and these are all shown here, and they correspond with the dashboards which we're looking at in the next module. Dashboards bring the numbers to life, and should be the starting point when you're designing your chart of accounts and the analysis codes. Let's look at the sales and profit performance first. Now this dashboard contains 18 separate reports and we've got three filters on here. We can filter by region, by product family or by industry. We've defined the sales trend, the profit trend and the unit sale trend. We've got the current sales by region, by product family and industry and the same for profitability. Then the top 10 customers and the top 10 products and who in the account team is selling the most. So lots of information. Moreover, using the filters, we can drill into it. So let's say we're interested in America. We'll filter the data. So now we're just looking at American sales. And you can see that from the region here. And furthermore, let's look into the biggest sector, which is the systems implementation. And you can combine these filters in any way you like. So it really gives you a lot of detail about what's going on. And then if you want to look further, let's say we want to know in the products, what was it behind those numbers? We've actually got the detailed report which shows which accounts were buying what and on which in invoices. So lots of detail and it allows management to investigate variances and make the numbers work for them. And I should just emphasize that this dashboard is just an example. These dashboards can be tailored to suit your business and virtually you can have an unlimited number of them. This dashboard compares two profit centers London and Manchester, and we can see how they perform on sales, profit, salary costs, overheads, etc. This dashboard has been designed to help the credit controller identifying the top 10 debtors, overdue invoices and over limit the customers, as well as breaking down the accounts receivable ledger into its composite parts, the invoices, credit notes and payments on account. You'd want to look into those old credit notes and payments on account. And finally, are there any draft items hanging around the system that need to be investigated? This dashboard monitors the bank accounts and you can see here for these three bank accounts the balance in the foreign currency, the balance in sterling, when they were last reconciled and when they were last revalued. 
what's the status of the reconciliations and how the bank account balance is moving during the course of the year. So that covers reports and dashboards. Good luck with the quiz and thank you for watching.